Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome uh, to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, weekend uh, wrap-up show for all you guys who are joining us from various social media platforms. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the weekly show. Hope everybody uh, is living their best life. Happy weekend. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the weekend. First time wearing a sweatshirt. That's it. Weather's slowly starting to turn uh, on the East Coast. And again, it's beautiful outside. 65, 70 degrees. I know that's not going to last. So hopefully uh, you guys are taking advantage of a beautiful, beautiful day. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank everybody uh, who came out uh, to our third installment of uh, the PS60 uh, workshop yesterday. Uh, it went four hours. Uh, I was literally speaking for four hours. Uh, I got a lot of great feedback, a lot of great content in there, a lot of added content to uh, what we've been doing for year, year after year. And uh, for all you guys who did miss it, because I know a lot of people, um, a lot of people uh, either on vacation, whatever the case may be, I got a lot of emails. Uh, it will be uh, available uh, to the general public later. Uh, later, either this week or early next week. So definitely uh, look out for that. It's, it's absolutely great, uh, a, a great, great tool uh, to put in your workshop, even if you don't trade specific pivots. Well, you know, we talk about it within the process of different supply zones and rejection areas and different areas of sneaky pivots. You could definitely apply that to what you're currently doing. And if you are trading on a smaller time frame, it really does expand uh, what you could possibly see, right? What you could possibly see when you expand that. Uh, time frame to a larger uh, interval. So uh, good morning, right? Good morning, guys. So let's talk about the market. Uh, yesterday, my voice was completely shot. I recovered. I recovered this morning. So get, getting guys uh, ready for the week. So you want to fight? We got to fight. So this is not going to end well. Okay. Uh, Trump, China, uh, my, you know, my, you know, what is bigger than yours. It's, it's a pissing contest. I've been saying this for weeks and weeks and weeks, uh, I, I don't believe a deal uh, with this current administration is going to take place. I just don't. I just it's just my opinion. I could be wrong. It has nothing to do. Um, you know, it's, I don't care if you're for Trump, against Trump. I, I don't care either way. Okay, I respect um, I respect the office uh, of the presidency, and I don't care who's in office because it doesn't, doesn't affect my life. And I don't say that in one way or another, it's just, it's just my, my personal reality. Uh, but I just don't think that China wants to uh, strike a deal uh, with this current administration. Uh, nothing was going on for two weeks. And there was no peep uh, out of China. They finally responded uh, Friday, and they're talking about $75 billion tax, 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 tariff, 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 as of September 1st. Uh, and again, nobody wins in a pissing contest. It's just the reality. It's, it's, nobody will win in a situation that there is no winners because, again, there's egos involved. And this morning or last night, there was a headline that came out of uh, Trump, whether he tweeted, whatever the case may be. And he said that he actually regretted, okay, regretted that the, the trade war kind of escalated to where it is in current, current, uh, current note. Uh, and then, ironically, the White House immediately retracted that statement. So what this is doing for the, the markets, okay, it's not even structurally, it's not even structurally broken yet. And I'll show you why technically. If you look at the QQQs, okay, and again, not really horrific stats across the board yet. Look, four, four weeks in a row that the Dow is down, all that good stuff. Nobody really cares about that. So materialistically, from the technical point of view, because again, I don't get into politics I don't get into bond yields. It doesn't affect my trading. Uh, I, I don't think it affects anybody's trading uh, in the live webinar or anybody uh, that's affiliated with us because, again, we're trading confirmation channels. Okay, We don't care which way the channel is going to confirm uh, up, down, as long as it confirms. Okay, As long as this confirms, as long as there's a range and there's a measure potential in that range, that's all we care about. If you look at Friday's pivots, and we'll get to that in a few minutes, you kind of see exactly why that you have to confirm, uh, you have to conform to kind of what the market is telling us or what the sentiment is telling us. And right now, if you look at the technical view of, on the Qs, right, you had a three percent move in the Nasdaq Composite, right? But, but again, we're, we're still trapped in this range. Okay, so again, the bear case is well, we're going to start breaking down this range because there's so uncertain, so much uncertainty, and this is only the first or second inning of a major, major uh, recession, and this, that, the other thing. Yeah, maybe. 
right? Maybe we, we don't know that again. We're, as we talked about in, in the workshop, we're not in the guessing business. Okay. And I showed perfect examples of what happens if you guess. We were looking, for example, we were doing uh, kind of a, a, a live exercise, right? Live exercise of a chart on Tesla. And I said, hey, guys, what do you think is going to happen next? And the point is half people said up, half the people said down. Again, we're not in the guessing business. Okay. We're in the collection of data that we talk about every single week. And we are waiting patiently for that data to get confirmed. And once it confirms, we're waiting patiently for that second entry to give us that, you know, the really, really good green light. And again, like we saw, we talked about and we saw very, very gr aggressive uh, moves on Friday's session. So technically, this is where we are. Okay, if you look at the bottom of the range here, uh, the Q's 181, right? 181 is the big area. There is no, again, room for interpretation for, again, for all you new traders that think you have to prove to yourself, to somebody that you're right, that this one, I'm long Amazon, I'm long this, I'm long that. It's going to be a 3,000. Nobody cares. Again, guys, nobody cares. Save your breath. If you're a professional trader, your, your only worry is about the data. You, you don't care what Joe Blow from Memphis, Tennessee is saying. You just don't care. You guys, remember that. When you're, when, you're, when you're approaching a professional trader and you're giving your opinion about that trader's trade, it's, like, it's literally like a mosquito on an elephant's ass. You don't even know you're there, okay? Because the, the most important part of trading, and I say this so many times, the ultimate equalizer is price action, okay? If the sentiment is cloudy, okay, and there is uncertainty, and there's materialistic events, like, right, a trade war, an escalating trade war that can only get worse because, again, we, we're not seeing any signs for it to get better. The sentiment is going to be down, okay? Again, nobody cares that Amazon might be at $3,000 a share four years from now. We don't care, okay? We care that Amazon, and by the way, I lost money on Amazon just on, on Friday, which is, which is, I completely messed up the trade. Now, not a big loss, but the point is, I'll show you guys in a second. Um, which is the most ironic part because I kind of messed up. But like nobody cares about your nobody cares about your long term opinion in stock. We're we're trading for the now. We're trying to win our interval. We're not trying to guess the closing price. All we're trying to do, okay, all we're trying to do is make sure that our theory, okay, our theory is backed up in confirmation. So again, if you believe Amazon's gonna be twenty five hundred three years from now, God bless. We just don't want to hear it, okay? We just don't want to hear it because, again, that's not what we're looking to do at the moment. And, again, traders versus investors are apples and oranges. Our timelines are different. Our approach is different. And our results are probably going to be different, especially for that interval, because, again, we're going with the market sentiment and not against it. So going into this week, again, guys, there's no room for interpretation. This 181 level on the Qs is huge, huge. Any close uh, below, right? Any close below 181 on the Qs, you have your first measure potential if you believe in the theory that stocks straight from supply to supply and demand to demand. Your first move is going to be to 79.50. Any close below 79.50, and you can see that as the low from uh, 8.5, right? 8.5. You have all the way move all the way down to the 176. So this 181 on a closing basis is a monster number, okay? Again, no, I don't wanna hear about what's gonna happen three years from now, two years from now, two weeks from now. This 181 is a do or die, there's no interpretation. To the upside, as you can see, uh, again, we are in this channel, it kept on getting rejected off this 8960 level, that is the high from 813, 8960, 8923, 8946. So again, the top of the range here is 8960, the bottom of the range is 80, 81. Again, you don't need to listen to what I'm saying. These are the facts, okay? These are the facts. You can go, you could try to buy in dips as long as you want, but again, Q's close at 181, I, there's a very, very good chance you're gonna lose money on your, on, your, on your dip buying. It's all fun and games until the dips keep on dipping. So just remember that, okay? You don't need to listen to me, right? What the hell do I know? You don't need to listen to me. But again, look at the market, read the news, listen to the sentiment. There are no breakouts. Are there stocks that are moving up every single day? Yeah, sure, absolutely. There are always gonna be stocks that are moving up. There's always earnings plays, catalyst plays, this, that, pumps, dumps, scrap, blah, 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 right? But that, the, 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 again, your, your job is not to try to find a needle in a haystack. It's just not. Your job is to find a macro sentiment, understand that macro sentiment, and ride that sentiment. It's like, it's like, it's like a surfer. Ride the sentiment. Okay, you're not going against it. You're going with it. So your game plan, okay, should be 
revolved around what you're seeing in reality, not fantasy world, right? You're not looking for some $3 stock that's going to break out in a market that is escalating in a materialistic trade war, okay? You're trying to find uh, a market that you can find the better value, the biggest value of stocks that are mirroring, right? The mirroring the price action, especially on the queues uh, that are about to break down, potentially, if we close below 181, potentially breaking down with the macro view, right? Not against it, but the macro view. So hopefully, again, for all you guys, again, everybody's an adult. I, I will never tell uh, another adult how to allocate uh, their money. Okay, you work for your money, you deserve your money, but at the same time, the only thing I don't wanna, just don't tell me where you think your stock, your investment, investment, and that's the key word, is going to be three years from now. I don't care, okay, I don't care. And again, at the end of the day, is the, the most important part of trading, okay, there's an instant judge and jury on your trade. You're either going to be right or you're either going to be wrong. And again, no disrespect to anybody. I just don't want to hear your position on why you think a stock is going to be higher. It just doesn't matter to me. Uh, again, and I don't think, and I think I can speak for any professional trader who's been doing this for a long time. We just don't care. If it makes you feel better, God bless. It's a free forum. We just don't care. So going to this week, again, uh, 89.60 to the upside, uh, 181 to the downside. Again, everything in the middle is kind of irrelevant from the macro point of view. Can we get a you know, potential uh, washout, right? Washout on Monday and reclaiming the 50-day moving average and kind of bouncing higher? Absolutely. That, that's on the table. Okay, that's definitely on the table. I'm not naive. I'm not sitting there and saying, well, just because there's macro news, we're going to go to hell in the handbasket. The you know, technical levels are still there to be obeyed. And you have to obey those levels. So if we have a worst case scenario, well, not a worst case, but a best case scenario of uh, breaking down, right? Breaking down below a gap down below this 181 level, a reclaim at somewhere in, in the morning, right? And stock starts taking out, you know, 10 a.m., 11, a, 11 channels, and the futures start firming up, and there's option flow uh, in the directional bias of the balance. Absolutely, this will be actually a pretty good opportunity because, again, if you believe in the stock, in, in the theory, stock straight from supply to supply. If we hold here and reclaim here on a close, yeah, then we go back higher. But, but again. Until that happens, we have to be open-minded, have to, um, have to uh, really look at the data, have to see how the futures act, have to see how the stocks react to news and all that good stuff. Again, we're not bulls, we're not bears, we're opportunists. And again, clear mind, no expectations equals no disappointments. So let's look at Friday's action. Um, there's some really, really good moves. Uh, I, I thought the week was solid. Um, I thought the week was really, really solid. Uh, I messed up the I messed up the, the the Amazon pivot. I'll show you that in a second. Um, so here it is. You know, here it is. Uh, here is again. Th this is the Twitter feed now, guys. We we're we're now uh, specifically uh, broadcasting all these live uh, pivot feeds uh, on the Twitter feed. Okay, so for all you guys, we're just doing this on. Uh, the Twitter feed again. There, there is no, there's, there is no omitting. There is no editing. These are the pivots. This is all we, you know. This is all we trade. And again, a lot of times, if things get really, really busy, uh, the live webinar, you know, sometimes I'll just forget to put in a pivot into the feed because again, you know, we're, we're kind of in the middle of trading the pivot. But um, more chances than not, it's going to be in this feed. And again, there's a huge difference between uh, the live webinar and uh, the Twitter feed. This the Twitter feed just shows well the feed. And the live webinar is traded development, uh, the option flows, the squawk box, uh, live seminar coverage, screen sharing, all that stuff to make sure that you are uh, pointed in the right direction of your development. So let's talk about Friday's pivots. Um, again, sentiment, right? We know the sentiment. We're waiting for confirmation and we're waiting for the second entry in that confirmation. Uh, Netflix, 293, big area. If it builds below, can flush. Uh, again, here's, you know, here's Netflix. You know, 293 was the previous day's low. It also correlated kind of perfectly, right? Kind of perfectly uh, with the 60-minute channel being below, uh, being below support, which is the lower Bollinger Band, and you know, pretty good move. Went down to like 90 and change. Uh, nice move on Netflix. BYND, uh, BYND. This is going to be the number, guys. This is going to be the number. It, it, it held up. It held up 46 several times, right? 46 several times. There's been, you, you know, it's coming. You know, it's coming. Any close below 146 on BYND, right? There's a big, big measure of potential there. Again, as you can see, again, even if you're not a professional chartist and been only trading for a couple of, you know, a couple of years, you can just see it visually, right? It keeps on getting rejected off the 10, rejected off the 10. And now it just needs to confirm below the, the five, right? The five day again, and I, and I really, uh, I really talked about it a lot uh, in the in the workshop. The five day for me is the shortest sentiment. Okay, the shortest 
uh, type of sentiment that you can have. Any close below the five-day moving average on BYMD, I think there's a measure of potential 136. And if it takes that 136, it goes to 127. And then, you know, then things can really, really get aggressive. So uh, obviously that did not trigger. Uh, Tesla, uh, really, you know, Tesla, I caught this trade. Um, I caught the Tesla trade. Uh, 217 needed to build. Uh, again, here's uh, here's 217. Uh, here's the 217 pivot, right? 217, 217, went all the way down uh, to 210. Uh, again, I, I personally think this thing starts building uh, below 210 on Friday, on Monday. I mean, look how much look how much downside you have. You have a lot of room. So nice job on Tesla. Nvidia des destroyed uh, 168 and a quarter, 168. If it builds below, can flush. Uh, here was NVIDIA, right? Here was NVIDIA. Here was NVIDIA. Here was the 60-minute channel on NVIDIA. It was right over here. It was your first opening range candle. This one wasn't as exotic as some of the others. It was a little bit easier to spot. But again, here again, you don't need to be creative. You don't need to trick everybody. You don't need to trick yourself. Sometimes pivots are you know pretty obvious and pretty clean. And you can see this whole 168 level, right? 168 level. So once it confirmed down and went to the first uh, support of 6640s. And then obviously that 6640s uh, really, really kicked in uh, when the whole, uh, when the whole uh, China, uh, China news broke and just a massive, massive move all the way down to the 160 level. Uh, Foot Locker, again, pretty basic, right? Pretty basic opening range low. Uh, Foot Locker, 36 is pre-market lows. If it builds below, it can flush more. Uh, here is Foot Locker, right? So here is your first move on Foot Locker. Again, stocks just don't randomly stop okay there, there there are areas of interest that if you don't know if you don't have the supply zones or demand zones on your charts you won't know why they randomly start again there this isn't you know this isn't the wiley and coyote uh, the wiley coyote drop, uh, dropping an anvil on the road runner and the anvil stops in midair and goes back up there's the, the stocks stop at very very specific supply and demand zones and you can see here pre-market if you didn't know that 36 was support initial support you know, again, you might have shortened the stock at, th at 36 in the beginning, no, no reason watching the stock go back, you know, two and a half dollars. But again, 36 was low. It confirmed the low. Stock got absolutely killed on Foot Locker. Uh, DCPH never triggered to the upside, obviously. Uh, Go never triggered to the upside, obviously. Uh, CRM never triggered to the upside, obviously. Here's where I messed up. Okay, here's where I messed up. Okay, so. I tweeted out, I go, Amazon 1787, if it builds below, it can flush, right? So here's Amazon's, and again, I wanted the blues in like a little less than four points in the trade. It's not the point. It's not the point of the losses. The point is exactly what happened. I, I kind of mistraded it. So here is the Amazon pivot. It breaks this initial can, right? This whole initial range, and this whole initial range is from all the way from the 19th, right? So you're talking about three, four days of initial range. And it puts in an initial low of 1788. Everybody see that, guys? Right? 1788 is the initial low. So what I did was when I saw the news on, when I saw the, the, the whisperings of China news, when that when that guy, I think that reporter from China, uh, was talking about it, the official news didn't break. Okay. So Amazon goes down to 17. 1784, right? It goes down to 1784 and it snaps back, right? It snaps back. The problem was I didn't let it snap back enough for a second entry trade. So when it came, started going back down, I had a little bit of FOMO because I had a feeling they're going to pull the plug on the market. So I had a little bit of FOMO. Usually 99% I, 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 of the time I won't have FOMO. I had FOMO in this trade and I shorted the stock. It goes down like two, three points right away. And then you had some news coming out of the White House and, you know, the stock went back up. Yeah, the stock went back up. And again, I took like a little bit less than four dollars uh, loss on it. It's not the point of the loss. The point is I mistraded the stock. I needed I needed to have the stock retrace much, much more than only a couple points. Uh, I, and I, I asked Andrew about it. Andrew's actually uh, Andrew Cordova in, in our room. He's 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 he trades Amazon amazingly. He trades he probably 99, 95% of all his trades are Amazon. And, you know, he does very well, 30, 40, 50 points trading channels, you know, trading channels uh, throughout the week. And, and I asked him, I go, did I not let it bounce back uh, enough for a second entry? And, and that was the key. And he said, yeah, I should have let it uh, bounce back a little more than the two, three points. And that was, that's where I screwed up because, uh, again, I had a little bit of FOMO. But, again, I have no ego. I actually asked the gentleman who's trading a year, okay, about his experience in something 
that he's much more familiar with the tendencies of the specific, specific stock than I am. And again, when you're a trader and you're a new trader, leave your ego at the door, man. Leave your bravado at the door. It's okay to ask questions for somebody that knows a little bit more about it than you do, right? I know the tendencies of Tesla. I know the tendencies of Netflix. I know the tendencies of NVIDIA and, and BYND by now. But Amazon is a different animal. And unless you're trading Amazon every day like he does, you know, I need some advice as well. So again, for all you new traders who are afraid to ask questions or embarrassed, I'm doing this for 20. Andrew's doing this for a year, okay? And I asked him his, his opinion on Amazon, and now I understand it, and going forward, I'll be much more, uh, I'll be much more, uh, I'll, I'll be smarter uh, for it. So I screwed up. All I needed to do was wait for it to bounce back a little more and then go through the second entry because the second entry was worth, if I screwed up, would have been worth 25 points. So I messed up. Uh, again, I don't dwell on the trades that we do well on. That's the point. You know, the pivots should work. I always look at the trades that I messed up and try to figure out where I screwed up so it hopefully doesn't happen again in the future. But again, it was a very, very aggressive market. You don't have time to uh, overthink. Hell, you don't have to, time to think. It's a very reactionary market. And I've said this now for weeks and weeks and weeks. If you're a new trader, you're seeing the market structure break down right in front of you, okay? It's okay if you're trading a year and you don't have a process, and the only thing you do is buy breakouts, it's probably not the market for you, okay? Again, I say this all the time, you know, God gave you two ears, two eyes, right? Two feet, two hands, you gotta trade both sides of the market, okay? If you really want to be uh, a professional trader and not a person who buys stocks in the bull market, you, you gotta trade both sides of the market. I mean, you don't have to, right? You don't have to do anything, okay? It's a free country, you don't have to do anything. But again, for your development, for your, uh, for your potential longevity in any type of mar market cycle, you really should start at least getting into uh, getting into the other side of the trade because again, when the market structure breaks down, some of these trades are ridiculously aggressive, right? Absolutely ridiculously aggressive, uh, as we see uh, all the time uh, in the daily webinar, especially on downturns of the market. So uh, let's get into tomorrow's session, guys. I want to give you guys uh, some ideas for tomorrow. Again, in, in a market like this, you really don't need to overthink. You, you just don't. Um, again, sometimes, I, again, I would say 90, 95% of the stocks I trade are the same stocks over and over again. Same names, Tesla, Netflix. I mean, literally the same names. Because again, I, I truly believe if you know the tendencies of the stocks you're trading, you kind of know what to expect. When you trade random stocks, and again, I trade random stocks here and there, you, you don't have a track record with their trading tendencies. You don't have the ability to say, well, wait a minute, if the stock does this at this interval, it should work. You don't have that, you know, you don't have that relationship with that stock. That's why I keep on trading the same names over and over again. So when I made my uh, game plan for tomorrow, okay, um, the names that I trade, you know, the names that I put on the list were, I, I, I literally made my list within five minutes. I mean, literally probably even less than three minutes because again, you don't need to be, uh, very, very, uh, you don't need to be very, very sophisticated uh, when it comes to a potential market breakdown. Technically, all you need to do is to find uh, find the vehicles that are going to make you uh, very, very comfortable with trading. So let's talk about it, right? Uh, Tesla, pretty basic stuff, right? Pretty basic stuff. Uh, breakdown below 211 or opening range low has a tremendous, uh, you know, absolutely tremendous uh, measure of potential. Again, nobody's saying it's going to go to 180 tomorrow, but again, you can see how much airspace you have and how much uh, measure potential you have from uh, this area to this area. But again, I will be watching Tesla and if the market gods are listening, somehow if you guys can open the market higher tomorrow, it would be great. Okay, it would be absolutely great. I just don't wanna see any big aggressive gap down because it makes uh, the day a little bit tougher because again, the value on a big aggressive gap down will be to the upside and then you have to be a lot more patient compared to if we get a gap up, for example, and all the names I'm looking to short, start getting weaker and start putting in lower up the lower highs on a 60 minute channel, the trade becomes much more high probable. Uh, so I'm, fingers crossed, we're hoping for a uh, kind of a gap up for tomorrow. But again, uh, Tesla, we are watching below this uh, 211, 210 breakdown. Uh, BYND, again, once it loses its five day moving average, and this is my uh, focal point of the day, uh, if this thing loses, <laughs> this loses its range, guys, it's, it's over, man. I, you know, I don't care how much, uh, how, how much, ro how many rose-colored glasses you're wearing. I'm telling you, this thing loses the five-day moving average. This thing's toast. Your first initial move could be to 136, and if it loses 136, it goes to 127. 
and looking at it from a from a puncher's you know puncher's chance lottery type of point of view, any close below 127 it starts filling in this whole gap uh, at 108. But again, can't put the cart in front of the horse. First, it needs to uh, reclaim the five uh, days support. Um, I mean, look at Amazon again. It might you know it might be three thousand dollars one day. And not gonna be there tomorrow. Uh, again, look at this whole channel here. First close below the 200-day moving average. If it starts reclaiming Friday's lows, I mean, you have an initial move is about $15, $17. And any close below $17.30, you have room all the way down to $16.83. So that's going to be a very, very important area. Uh, Netflix looks like it wants to challenge uh, the lows of uh, August the 15th. I will be watching this channel breakdown of the 60-minute move for a measure potential move to 88. And if it goes any close below 87, as you can see, that will be the initial support. Uh, any close below 87 has a lot more downside to it. Uh, Monster, ben uh, is it Monster or Monster.com? Yeah, Monster Beverage. Again, you know, it's this is gonna break down. I mean, it stopped perfectly at its linear regression line. If it starts building down below 55, 50, 50, uh, 55, 50, 55, you have measure potential to about 53 and a half. Uh, HSIC, uh, HSIC, you know, it's breaking down. I mean, what's, I mean, again, these are pretty basic charts and you know, they're breaking down. Uh, the low of HSIC was uh, 59 and a quarter for Friday. You know, just watch the price action, watch the confirmation. This thing starts building 59 and a quarter, 59. It should get a cash flow move to 58. Again, not every stock trades like Tesla will give you potential eight, nine points. Sometimes 50 cents, 70 cents, 40 cents a dollar is all you're going to get. But again, it all adds up at the end. So again, going to this week, again, how do you not have a sell sentiment? I am watching for a possible washout and reclaim what we talked about a few minutes ago. But at the end of the day, guys, go with the flow. Don't go against it. Again, you don't want to piss into the wind because, well, you know what happens. Guys, have a great uh, weekend, everybody. Uh, enjoy your life. Again, uh, the video, uh, the workshop recording will be available uh, for the general public somewhere later into uh, next week. It's, a, it's, it's an awesome, awesome, um, it really is an awesome fit for your uh, educational library. It's four hours, a lot of great content. And the most important part is it's giving you an, an alternative view to the normal. Guys, have a great week. God bless. And I'll see you all in the field tomorrow. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.